Okay, so do you remember you were telling me about Kevin Hart and Snoop Dogg? And Olympic highlights. That's what it's called. That's what it's called. (laughs) Well, it's called Olympic highlights, but Snoop always goes, Welcome back to Olympic highlights. Okay, that's number one amazing. Number two, I watched clips of their show on, I don't know, the internet or something, and it was really funny. And I was like, I need to watch all of these. I don't know how many episodes they've done, but I need to watch all of them. Oh my God. So far, they've done seven. Wow. Snoop is a national treasure. We do not deserve him. We love him. Oh my God. The two of them are so funny. (laughs) Basically, all that happens is Kevin Hart says something stupid. Snoop laughs. And then they just like banter (laughs) off of each other. And the latest thing is they had Michael Phelps on. And Michael and then Kevin Hart goes, Michael, I'm going to show you how freaking awesome I am in the pool. And it's Kevin Hart actually like swimming butterfly. Oh and he my. looks, he looks like super fast and amazing. And, and everyone's like, Oh, like Michael Phelps looks confused and he's like going closer to the TV. And Kevin's like, I bet you didn't think I was that fast, huh? I bet you didn't think I was that great. And then Michael Phelps goes, Are you wearing fins? <laughs> and it's as if Kevin didn't think he would get found out and Snoop. <laughs> Falls to the ground, like literally <laughs> as announcers, he's falling off the table laughing. Kevin's like, I don't know how he had that magic vision and saw my fins. But yes, I have fins on. So what? Whatever. <laughs> oh my God. They just do dumb stuff and they're cursing. It is the best <sighs> Olympic highlight recap ever. It beats every announcer. They're so funny. They react as if you would react on the couch with your yep. friend. Yeah. Oh my God. They're so funny. The one <laughs> Snoop was. <laughs> commenting on equestrian. That's and the I one get- I saw. And he's like, oh man, this horse is crip walking. Oh, sh- <laughs> sh- sh- <laughs> and he's like, I gotta get that horse in the video. Yeah. <laughs> put him in the video. And then they get in a philosophical discussion of like, why don't the horses get medals, man? That's not fair. That, that rider didn't do anything. They just sat there. Bullsh- <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, what airline does the horse fly? Yeah. He's like, Emirates? Damn. <laughs> Come on, Everett. That's fancy. Chee, chee, chee. I saw that, and then I saw when they commented on men's basketball, and they were, oh. it was like a recap, and then Kevin Hart's like, we're going to talk about underdogs. Underdogs. And Snoop Dogg's like, yeah, I'm an underdog, because nobody thought that I would make it to where I made it, and now I'm an international chef with Martha Stewart. And <laughs> And you're like, what are you saying? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> he is so funny. He's so smooth. He's so oh, I love he, him. he's quick with a slow the way his cadence of his voice. Oh my god, he's so funny. And he just laughs at Kevin and he just constantly makes fun of Kevin. And uh, Kevin hurts the kid that like gets angry and kickball or takes it way too serious. Yeah. And it's so funny because he can't even help himself. Okay, so maybe about like a month or two ago, Snoop Dogg was at Bar A and I wasn't what? there and I regret it. I will regret it till the day I die. Because what? How? What? what? Where? Why? When? when? I know. Who? The only famous person I've ever met at Bar A was stupid Dom Mazzetti and that doesn't count because he's that? oh you've never seen Tom <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I'll send you a video. He made like YouTube videos. Oh, okay. okay. Um, he pretends to be an Italian guy. So, wow. Sopranos comes full circle. There you oh, go. Oh, we take a sip. Yeah, let's take we a sip. We moved from Degrassi to Sopranos. <laughs> I know. But we got really... Snoop in there. <laughs> but so, Snoop's amen. In there, so. Sisters, sisters who seen it. We are the sisters, sisters who seen it. Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, shooby dooby doo what? Sisters, 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 sisters. Sisters who seen it. Well, hi there. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back, listeners. I hope you got your uh, cleats on. Your boots. As they say, a uh, uh, <laughs> Oi! Is, is that what they're called? They call them boots a lot oh, in the movie. Oh my. Well, I hope you have those, because, woo! 
We got some soccer slash football. That's not an accent. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I can't get it. Oh, no. This is where, as oh, Americans, no. we're wrong because everyone calls it football and we're like, soccer. Yeah. yeah. We're Americans. Soccer. We're annoying. We do what we want. Yeah. We, don't, we don't like your metric system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, listeners. Well, I'm going to jump in and introduce ourselves. So we are the Sisters Who Seen It, the podcast where two sisters who are not movie critics look back on some of our favorites throughout the years through a psychological, ethical, and familial lens. I'm Katie. I'm Bridget. And that's bollocks! <laughs> I like that line. I was like, let's get more of that. Let's get more of that being said, but they can only get well, said twice. <laughs> there's a reason that Sporty Spice is the only one without a fella. That mom was too much, 2003. Too much. And what's no. our movie, Kate? Our movie this week is Bend It Like Beckham. Which, lots of fun facts for this movie. <gasps> oh, yay. They did not believe America would get it. They don't think they get the Bend It and then the Beckham part. I got it. Yeah, and they were trying to think of all these other movie titles for it. But... It works! Because isn't that what she does to, like, score the winning goal? She, like, has the ball bend on the penalty yeah, shot? Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, she does I don't it a know. Bunch. That's what I made up in my brain. So, congrats, movie. You did it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. This was, to your point in the last episode, how highly rated this was. I could not find a lot of critiquing this movie. Even people that talked about it later on, like some 2000. 19 articles, 2020. People love it. And Kate, yeah. I want to learn if you do. Okay, so I enjoyed it, but there are some things that I was like, Ooh, don't like that. Not into it anymore. Now, when this movie came out, I was like 12, maybe even 11. Wow. So unfortunately, at that age, you know, as a girl in America, you most likely have low self-esteem. And so, you know, things hit a little differently for Katie back then. Oh, <laughs> they for do little, little Katie? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Bridge, do you want to give us a synopsis for the movie? I do. I yeah. do. And I wrote down the sentence from Amazon Prime. All right. Two ambitious girls, not women, girls. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Two ambitious, I'll fix it, women, despite their parents' wishes, have their hearts set on careers in professional soccer. Okay. Actually, I don't hate that sentence. Yes. Yeah, That's yeah. actually like better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be like, have their ambition set on their coach who's <laughs> doing something illegal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the star of the film, Jasminda. Jess, for short. Yeah. Love soccer. Great at it. Didn't really realize that there's like professional leagues or even just travel leagues. Right. And I read an article that I think fits the synopsis. This is a um, lesbian love story where uh, she meets <laughs> Jules because Jules has been watching her from the park bench. You sound like Jules's mom, Bridget. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> Well, I think the movie... I, I want to make a new ending for the movie. Okay. <laughs> but uh, Jules is stalking her, and that is played by Kira Knightley. That's pretty true, yeah. And she then says, you need to play on this team. You're so good. She goes, what? There's a team? And she's like, come on down. And all of this has to be hidden from her family that are Sikhs. And mm -hmm. a woman playing football is the craziest thing in the world. And you're supposed to, in this order, learn how to cook Indian food and marry a nice Indian boy. That's the order of what There's only mom... two things in the order? <laughs> yes, that's what she's doing. That's actually not bad. I'm not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> um, and simultaneously, she's hiding this from her family who disapproves. But it's very bad at hiding it because she gets oh. caught a lot. Oh, my. I wrote that. She I was like, how caught. many times are we? gonna keep getting caught and then doing it anyway what's the point oh jesus christ so she gets caught a lot her parents get very mad at her 
her, but they're very distracted because her sister is getting married. And all these shenanigans are happening, and Jess just can't give up soccer. And so the rest of the movie is her kind of fighting the cultural expectations from her family, as well as there is a little bit of a sprinkle love story with a coach. And she realizes that not only (laughs) am I amazing at soccer, but she has the opportunity to go play professionally. And like all magical movies, it buttons up with a little bow at the end. Yeah. The parents realize that, you know, they have to just let their child be happy. The end. How'd I do? That's pretty good. That was a good synopsis. Mine would have been 20 minutes long. So, (laughs) yeah, but yours always has better detail. (laughs) No, it's, I don't know if that's good. I have to say the lead's name. She she was big on ER. I'm I'm forgetting her name right now. Parminder Nagra. Yes. And I hope I'm saying Nagra correct, but I'm. I feel like that might be correct. Well, and Kate, this movie was written and directed by a woman. A woman, which is why it's highly rated. Highly rated, and the female characters hold up. They do. They, they hold sure up. Do. Except the mom characters. But no, she, she definitely didn't like the mom. But like both moms. I was like, you're like the same character, but like a little different, but like not really. And oh, like, yeah. It's annoying. Very stuck in like patriarchal ways. Yes. Right director Gurninda Shadhe. So if she was a writer and director, was this kind of like a, I'm basing this off of my experience type situation? I yes. Wonder? So uh-huh. I read about that. This is total, my big fat Greek wedding style. Mm. Oh, 1000%. And she's actually famous for movies like this. However, football, soccer, yeah. she literally was like, we'll add this in, but I have nothing to do with this. So she like hired experts, Beckham adding into the storyline, just fit with the soccer theme. But like in general, nothing to do with it. Yeah. All of her films are all about kind of this like Indian culture in this British London Mm -hmm. metropolitan that kind of like is gentrifying, but not. And there's just like all these complicated things happening. Yeah. And before the movie was finished. So I think like either before they kind of finished filming, editing, whatever, her dad died. Oh my God. So as she was kind of writing this, like the sappiness with her dad and the daughter Mm. and I think that plays so well and the movie like came out a lot and think about her as a filmmaker like that type of family is not pushing a female to go be a writer filmmaker that's a very like rare job to go be famous so she sounds so cool we were talking about Nancy Meyer a little bit earlier this is like another Nancy Meyer let's all hang out together guys let's all hang out and just she seems so cool like she seems like such a relaxed director where she even like brought some family members in so like some Aww. at the at the wedding party oh, some yeah. of those were like her cousins and her mom and like random people that she was like can you come like play my movie i mean there was a lot of people in those scenes i was like <laughs> so wow many people. this is that couldn't film this during covid i'll tell you what <laughs> no, man no, this is not a covid approved no, set it's definitely not <laughs> this though we definitely need to get into it my critique is that i felt like it was a repetitive on the same problems like over and over and over again yes and I was getting sick of it getting caught and then you're like oh no my life is over but then you're like anyway back to lying to my parents and then they fall for it and it happened literally like five times I was like I'm tired oh my god and even after she gets caught you see her like making samosas and like dribbling a a ball I'm like she's allowed to like dribble soccer balls at home and they're just like we don't know what she's doing when she's not here (laughs) she was like (laughs) kneeing like a head of lettuce I was like, you're not even hiding it. Like, the, like I feel like part of you doesn't care, but like you oh think you care, but you don't care. I don't know. Yes. Oh boy. Um, I love how this movie starts out because it's just like I was a little swindled because, like I said, I've watched this movie probably more than once. I think maybe even more than twice, and more so when I was like younger. And I remember like the premise and it, blah blah blah, David Beckham. But I didn't remember in the beginning where it was like, oh, it's highlights of Beckham. So I'm like, oh, yo, this is like Space Jam. Like, we're just seeing David Beckham, like, be David Beckham. And like, that's cool. And then it's like, Jess is like in like the thing. And I'm like, oh, boy, it's one of those. But they made it even funnier because then they were like, shoot to a newsroom. And I was like, this is a very elaborate, like, fantasy we're having. Like, I don't have daydreams like this, but like, that's cool. Maybe I should. And then her mom is like in the newsroom, like, she should not be playing football. 
blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It was a good way to start. I was like, all right, all right, all right. I kept thinking of like meme technology of like her head being on a body. I feel like people (laughs) do that all the time now. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And then it's like, she has a giant Beckham poster in her room. What did that remind you of, Bridge? What other movie that we did? Wait, was this the 80s one? What is it called? Yeah, where she had her boyfriend, like, cardboard cut out. Can't buy me love. love. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's what it reminds me so of. So, it's funny. I took that a little different. I, I took it like... <laughs> You know, like, again, they're hammering home. She loves soccer. She and loves David Beckham. Beckham. She's got no other personality traits besides, look at the poster. Literally talks to her David Beckham poster <laughs> only. And I'm a little worried for her. And maybe she should get a phone. I don't know. Like, I wrote what, that. What I was like, should we be concerned about her mental health that she's talking to a poster all the time? a little worried about it. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, he's not God. a diary. What are we doing? Ugh. <laughs> but we get right into the like sexism between Jess mm-hmm. and her sister going shopping and I hate shopping and then Jules and her mom showing oh. her a wonder bra that you could add in these pumps and they make your boobs bigger. And by the way, a drinking game for this movie is how many times do they bring up boobs? Or Holy bras. Yeah. Cow. Yeah. Yeah. 2002, 2003, obviously boobs were in because my lord but like was that a thing the like air pumping it uh, looked like a, it looked like an inner tube you wear on your arm when you're swimming <laughs> i was like wait that goes in your bra like you accidentally oh. bump into a sharp corner and you're in trouble i'll tell you that <laughs> you're, you're, you're yeah, that's not gonna work out so like i just don't really know what's happening oh all i kept writing was why do we hate women's bodies oh why can't God. we just be why can't we be yeah it just like reeked of like early 2000s even like the like kind of side characters there were like this group of girls who were like really girly that like the older sister was friends with it was like the makeup and the glitter and like the weird clothes i was like oh my god early 2000s we hate it katie did not feel comfortable in that time period hard no core it was very mean girls right everyone had the tight polo yeah and you showed just a little bit of your lower belly a little bit and they also wore like blue contacts to change their eye color like we can't even have eye colors now we have to change them that I actually think was somewhat of a cultural thing too really Um, yeah I think so because they also there was uh, there were other references where like later in the movie Jess's mom makes a comment like you're getting so dark you know because you're in the sun and like men don't like that and like stuff like that and I'm like oh man well and what was hard hard for me is I'm like, okay, I'm obviously not Sikh. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I'm like, how extreme these cultural like, if somebody now watches it and they have that same religion, yeah. culture, are they like, this was so dramatic. My family right. is not like that. Or, are they going to watch it and say, yeah, that reminds me of my mom and that reminds me of my dad and oh man, that's how it was. Like, that's the part that I'm like, I am never going to do this movie right because I don't, yeah. I don't get Yet how hard it must be to upkeep right. something and how is it as serious like you know they're downstairs with like a picture of their Sikh god so yeah. to speak and she's upstairs with Beckham and I keep right. thinking is she the rebel or are they progressive or <laughs> right. is this like what I can't pick you know well, I guess they end the movie pretty progressive but yeah it takes it takes a whole two hours to get there because I don't think they're Ooh. they're thinking like that in the beginning oh but, man we also, yes. in the beginning, we meet Jess's... So Jess has a guy friend named Tony, which I don't know what it's short for. And don't worry, listeners, it's not Tony. So <laughs> No, this is a... Um, They're best friends. Yeah, he's like our best friend. He's And he's nice. He's like always super nice. And he also likes soccer. So, and okay, so they... Because this is what I... And again, like another thing I wasn't entirely sure of. And then it kind of became a little clearer. I wasn't sure of the ages we were working with. And then Jess... Jess and Tony, they kind of have a conversation about, like, a science class. So I'm like, okay, this is, like, 
high school because then she references like oh going to uni which is like university so to me I was like y'all are seniors in high school and it's about to be summer I hope or I don't know and then I'm sweating a lot so I looked it up because I was uncomfortable yeah Um, they're in the movie supposedly 18 okay but they're still seniors in high school they're still like high school children again a woman wrote and directed this so I think there was a specific they're 18 okay do i still love the coach piece because he clearly was not 18 i mean he was probably like 20 something no i still didn't like although it. i'll tell you he looked like he was like little i wrote i was like and here's their 18 year old coach <laughs> ready to, to teach the team his years of experience <laughs> his, with all yeah, his scouting like, knowledge years of soccer do you play because he's like oh man i'm out of commission because of my knee i'm like all right what are you gordon bombay you're like 20 <laughs> and you're like i can't do it everyone life is so hard physical therapy doesn't exist okay Jeez. he's sharpening his cleats like yeah. hans and hans's <laughs> shop <laughs> honestly that would be i remember a, these days e- at 12 easily could see the crossover i'm not gonna lie but oh my god um oh my yeah god. but so jess and tony they're like yeah let's go play soccer in a public field even though apparently like that's like forbidden for jess but like we don't care jess does literally what she wants all the time and doesn't Whatever seem to care so but that's where like you said kira knightley who is jules starts seeing her and she's like oh who's Who's that lady playing I mean, soccer? Kate, it was a little like, who's that lady? Who's that lady? Ooh, love the lady. I did. I mean, she kind of was like, she had that like gazing look. I was like, okay. Yeah, it was a little voyeuristic. It yeah. was a little Mr. Miyagi style, like peeking <laughs> through the bushes. And you're like, yes. hey now, that's too much. Don't do that. But there is a lot of like the wedding buildup in the beginning because the older sister is engaged and there's a lot of like traditions and cultural things that they kind of do in preparation for the wedding so there's a lot of that and I just go, what did I write here? I go, laughing my chi off at early 2000s jokes about cell phones? Why did I write that? Well, there was a lot of flip phones. Oh, no, because do you remember that one scene where it was like all these people were like at their house, like it was some type of like engagement celebration and then someone's cell phone goes off and literally all the grandmas whipped out cell phones and it was like, <laughs> they like made it a point to like hold on that and I was like, okay, early 2000s, <laughs> like we get it, cell phones are like... <laughs> It's like the Facebook post from all these baby boomers. You're like, (laughs) no, put it away. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so I have in my notes, I don't know why, as another, all, as another like weird thing that was normal back then, all of the guys just played soccer with were kind of like ragging out, like, oh, you're going to go play for a girls team. And Keira Knightley makes (gasps) a hand gesture. She She, she, does. She's jerking off. And I was like, wow, that's kind of racy but she did it she like i mean she's a good actress right so she like played it off well i was like that is the funniest freaking thing to me because no 2021 movie is making that gesture i'm just gonna tell you that right now who's making that gesture no i love that i was like yes kira do more of that i mean not like don't like do. i mean you can but like I, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, your world. I mean, you're free. Okay, okay, Whatever. Okay, backtrack, backtrack. Okay, so sorry. You're 18. Oh no. Hold then on, hold Jess on. sneaks away to go play soccer, but has no cleats. She has no cleats and she wears like long pants, which we then later find out why she does that. And Jonathan Rhys Myers is like kind of a rude boy about it. He's rude like, boy. Uh, rude boy. no shoes. Wow. Whatever. And then he like rolls his eyes. I was like, you're an 18 year old. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I do not want to hear the sass. And you kind of see him in jewels and you're like, that's weird. You guys act like your friends and that's a weird relationship for a coach. Coaching a student gay. The reason she was like wearing pants and then they like brought up the scene of, oh, I don't want to wear shorts because I have this burn and I don't want yeah. anyone to see my scar. That really happened to her oh. in real life. Wait, the actress or the, the writer? Actress. <gasps> the actress. Oh my God. And, the dir- and she lied to the director because she was like nervous she wouldn't get the part. Oh. And the director's like, this is how cool she is. She's like, we'll just write it in. Like, that'll be the characters. Yeah. 
best. How adorable is that? That is adorable. Right? And then it was like a seamless, because then the coach, you know, he was like, oh, well, you know, look at my knee scar. And like, yeah. you're like, what? Like, people, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe early 2000s. That was like, <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> you're deformed, except you're not, and your leg works great. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Like, yeah. So I thought that was like a cool piece. That is but cool. In the midst of all of like wedding shopping and engagement and all this is we get Kira Knightley's mom who screams at her husband. She's and the daughter. Worse. Alan, our daughter has breasts. And screams it. And I was like, well, drink again. Because she screamed about it. Because they were playing soccer in the backyard. And she was like, I want to remind you your daughter's express. Do you think this mom, like, herself might be, like, a lesbian? And, like, going through some, like, really, like... 100%. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, like, that toxic, like, reaction of, like... Projection? 100%. You're, like, like, trying to deny it so hard. You just, like, lash out at everyone? Oh, no. Her mom is nuts. And what was sad about her mom is she had a good arc going yeah. where you thought okay she was trying to learn soccer and she was trying to be more loving <sighs> I know. and then she just ruined it at the end I hated that I hated that so much I was like that was so unnecessary like you could have ended that subplot like Ugh. in the middle of the movie and it would have been fine but they just like kept it going and it was the worst <laughs> the worst yes yeah. oh man there was a lot of also like I'm seeing at this part especially once Jess finally gets on the side soccer team it was like never ending montage <laughs> of like Ooh. practice practicing yeah practice <laughs> practicing yeah Woo! Do, do, so did that annoy you like were you sick of them so i love a montage okay i i really do but like it was a lot i was like there's many of these happening like we probably could have cut out like one or two of them and made the movie a little shorter this is where i kind of disagree with you because i liked them yeah mainly as I realized that they were actually playing soccer. Yeah, they were. And I looked it up, and Kira Knightley is a fantastic player. Like that the, does they had, not surprise they me. They had to go to training and for three months, and they were like, first of all, the two of you are, are amazing at yeah. soccer, just for being actresses who we didn't even know if you were good at soccer. Right. And he's like, Kira Knightley, like if she was actually playing since she was little, could go pro. Like, wow, what? that's crazy. Like. So fun. So the montages took me a while because I kept being like, are they really playing? I really, so like that distracted me, I think for like five to 10 minutes. And I like liked it because I was kind of testing like, you're right. They're not playing. <laughs> uh, this little cheap sky. Oh, they're playing. Look at that. I just, I don't know. I was just kind of like, all right, I've seen it. Okay, like, it's fine. <sighs> but, you know, fun music. So that's always a great time. And we get hit in the face with the end because somehow the sister and her fiance are making out at the airport parking lot. Yeah, okay. And again, in my brain, I was like, oh, this, like, is going to lead somewhere. I remember this, like, being something like they get caught or someone sees it. Nope, that never happens. The mom, like, does a passing comment where she's like I know you make out with him and I was like wait that's the only reason we saw that that's the only reason I mean like I guess but like why this is like a cultural thing that I'm like so you can't like hook up before you get married so you have to like stay apart and that's why you guys sneak around to go make out with each other is that what that's about is it sneaky though when it's like the middle of the day and like a giant (laughs) airport because I feel like that's the worst place to do do? that what would you do you you get off your flight. You're tired as all hell. You got your bags. You get to the parking lot that's 800 feet away. And some D-bags are making out next to you in the parking lot. I- I'm honking my horn and being like, get out of here. Get like, out of here. Get out of my face. Get out of here. I had a layover. Jeez. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, that was, um, oh I don't know God. what that was, but that was something. And then somewhere in here is where Jess gets caught the first time. Like, so many times. So many times. The one of eight million. And this isn't even when she's on the team. She's like playing for funsies in the park with the guys and then she tells yeah. them like, yeah, I made the team and then they like make fun of her but then the mom, again this park, it's like a like with daytime, this is a public <laughs> place like I just don't think you guys are that sneaky. This I'm is not sure. far away from three ninjas. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They could use <laughs> yeah. some ninja school because she... And a part of me is 
sad for her because she's so innocent about it. She's like, I'm just playing soccer. Like, I forget I have to hide it all the time. Yeah, and then the mom just kind of rags into her. And, and the mom is mainly upset because she's like, people might make up a rumor and then that's going to ruin your sister's wedding. I was like, oh, God. Oh, Jesus. This is like a very intense family dynamic. But then that's what ends up happening. Yeah, kind of. But not like at that moment. I think it's yeah. later. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, because it... <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> these, these English girls with their short hair, oh we can't tell if they're boys or not. <laughs> that was they kinda, must have said that like 15 times. That was kind of funny. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, what's happening? What family wants a daughter who plays soccer but can't cook? I'm like, uh, patriarchy. <laughs> or take a shot. But like, this is what's <laughs> annoying about it because I think this is why I got like, and I understand now that you explained like what happened with the writer's father, it makes a little more sense why she decided that the dad was gonna be the one to then flip. Yeah. But if you think about, like, the patriarchy is, like, driven by men and their mindset, and in this movie, both dads, honestly, were, like, the most supportive. Yep. Jess's dad, not, like, super a lot at first, but he also wasn't, like, as opposed as the mom. Like, the yep. moms were very, like, against it, and I was just like, we can't have, like, one mom who's like, yeah, girl power, like, go girl, and then the dad is the opposite like it was like just it was literally like a mirror image Mm -hmm. of the parents perceptions of it and I just it kind of annoyed me I wish there was like it it was annoying because it's flip and yeah it is it is a little less realistic yeah however that mom's entire livelihood was based on believing that right that I cooked so I got a good man who's your good father that's how we got you it's a little bit of like like, women can also be the problem, but doesn't mean we had to see it so contrasting. That's I'm true. I'm with you. Yeah. But here was one thing that I thought was kind of interesting about this movie that I liked, and I realized it more in the beginning, but I forgot to bring it up. They don't go into explaining the cultural elements in, like, dumb layman terms. Like, right. in my Big Fat Greek Wedding, she's like, when we have a lamb roast, yeah. <laughs> it's because of the fourth holiday right. of blah, blah, blah. Like, they didn't do any of that, like and I lessons. thought it made it way better so they focused more on like the cultural back and forth so yeah they did a lot more like showing and not telling yes but then part of me was like I don't know what's happening but it looks cool but like I kind of can infer well and I'm also like you could google it I guess (laughs) yeah I guess I could so but the, the thing that it was more the cultural problems right it was more like first of all this is when Jewel comes in and is so to speak a bad influence because she's like okay Yo, your mom found she out definitely is she's like yeah. say you have a job and lie and i was like yeah. Ooh, she she's an see. enabler all right <laughs> i know mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then i also feel like when the parents caught jess and jules like what they thought was kissing but they were just like laughing hugging and they were like if as a family if you have a daughter who's just out kissing willy-nilly women you can't manage your family and so our kids can't get married and they were like this is ridiculous they were just thinking of excuses and blah blah blah. and i'm like oh my god so that i feel like was more of where the focus was which everyone could follow right everyone knew that you didn't need to know like the cultural aspects of it you're like wow this is just their beliefs and that's wild. Yeah. And then all throughout here too, Jules and Joe, who is our 18 year old coach and Jess, they're all hanging out. And there was a lot of uncomfortable triangle hugging that I didn't like a lot and I hated it. And it was, I too much. I think back to every coach I've had in that 17, 18 time frame. If I even tried to hug them, <laughs> I would be like, ew! <laughs> like, they were rolling on the ground. Oh my god, I, mean, I know! It was like tackling. I was like, no, don't do it. Oh no. And I read in a lot of articles, people were like, yeah, Jess was in love with Joe. And I'm sorry, I read other articles that were like, Jess and Jules were meant to be. I'm sorry, they had more <laughs> chemistry. I could see They were see meant that. to be. Honestly? I thought they were natural. They literally built a relationship better. Joe yeah. barely knows Jess. She, she, he knows she has a scar and her parents aren't really into it. But like, and he goes to her house like twice, but only uh, to like beg to play. I mean, agreed. get out of here. Agreed. They had like two conversations, you know, it was just not that great. It was a very like Love Actually-esque relationship where like, 
like, what? We're not really in a relationship, <laughs> right? Somebody just wrote us like that. So one of us is a cardboard cutout. So yeah, not good. So and then, okay, so I have in my notes here that then Jess gets outed for the second time that she is playing <laughs> soccer because the older sister kind of covers for her because yes. Jess has her mom thinking, oh, I've got this job. That's where I go all the time. And then the mom's like, oh, your older sister is going to pick you up. And then the older sister comes home later and is like, oh, I went to your job, Jess, and your boss said you were gone. You're like, what? And then she's like, oh my God, Jess, you must be like making out with a guy. Which like, honestly, Jess, like use your brain. Like you could have like pulled something out of your butt. I mean, we're already trying to lie, but like you're doing it half. So like, this is why (laughs) this isn't working out very well. And she doesn't own up to it. And then the sister kind of tells on her. So that's great. We get caught again. Well, because the sister was pissed because the yeah. wedding got called off and the yeah. sister was like, oh yeah, well, uh, here's an emotional dagger. Take it. Yeah. And then there's a part where Jess and Jules, again, in their beautiful friendship slash romance, <laughs> go on a little trip to buy cleats or as Bridget pointed out, bo- boo. Boots? <laughs> boots. Boots? Okay. Where's your boots? Soccer boots. Because Jess is like, oh, I need shoes for the wedding. And the mom's like, here's some money. And she's like, haha, I'm going to go like buy not shoes for the wedding. And you're like, Jess, again, like you got to like. So obvious. You, you need to like do some covering up. Like you're not, there's no covering. And None. then she gets caught immediately because they're like, let me see your shoes. And then she's like, whoops, I bought shoes that you didn't like. <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, oh my and then god. the mom the mom literally starts crying when she sees the soccer <laughs> cleats. And I I I couldn't help it. I laughed. I thought that was kind of funny because I was like, oh no, this is oh extra. Oh my god. This is extra. But in here, again, even though Jess got outed for what is this, the third, fourth time? I don't know. <laughs> I already lost count. She goes back to soccer practice, and then the coach like gets mad at her, and I didn't really know what was going on. She was on. talking. She wasn't like okay. paying attention. Which I was like, listen, bro, don't use your power because you're trying to flirt with her. Rude. Ew, that's ew, that's like a like power move where he's yeah. like, I'm gonna get you alone and like tired, and then you'll have to like ew, talk okay. to me. And you're like, gross. <laughs> it is gross. Well, that's what happens. And then there's like a part where he's like, Jess, no, you're injured. And she's like limping. She's like, my ankle. Ankle. And then they have some stupid talk about how if you're injured, you should not be injured. And then he gives her an intimate foot massage. <laughs> and I hated it. And you thought of Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction. Ew. And you're like, listen, there is a theory on foot massages and it means one thing. It's and Samuel L. Jackson knows oh, John Travolta does it. Oh, <laughs> no. Quentin Tarantino directed that scene. We hate it. But, like, that doesn't come into the plot ever again. She's like, I'm injured. And he's like, let me touch your feet. And then it's like, anyway, (laughs) now she's great again. And I was like, what? Why do we do that? I hate to to see it. Oh, my God. Mm Mm-mm. But even he mentions at some point, because basically Jess was like, you know, hey, Jules, are you like into the coach? Like, do you have a crush on him? She's like, oh my God, no, not at all. And he would totally get in trouble if he like got with one of the players. Yeah, everyone. Well, that's your first mistake, Jules. You should have just said you liked him. Right. But because of that, I don't know why the rest of the movie had the coach proving he didn't believe that. Like, he just kept (laughs) trying to hook up with Jess. It's like, I'm willing to get fired for these little high school ladies. Ew. Here was one thing I didn't like about that, like, character in real life. So, I read in a bunch of interviews that he was like, I thought the movie was gonna be terrible so I didn't tell anybody I was in it. Jonathan Reese Myers was like that? Yeah. Oh. And I was like, really? Because because it was, like, a female led movie and you were the female coach? Like, mm, Yeah, mm. I don't like that. So, I was a little disappointed in uh, his character and his actions off the film. Well, so there. (laughs) So basically, we go through all this drama, and then they start to really crack down with Jess, where they're like, you can't go to practice, but which is why the coach goes to the house. And it's like, hey, I'm the coach. He was actually being somewhat professional. He's like, I didn't know she didn't tell you. She lied to me too. This is like my 
my political duty as but a coach. But he does come dressed a little sexy, and that was a oh, lot. Oh, does he? I missed that. I mean, he had like a V-neck, and I was like, sir, button <laughs> up. This is a family. This is a private <laughs> establishment, all right? <laughs> oh, I missed that part, but it doesn't go well. They're like, we don't care. We hate you, too. She's not playing football. We have a wedding, by the way. Does anyone know about the wedding? Bye. <laughs> They're like, we have a wedding that literally got canceled yesterday, but maybe it'll happen. We don't know. We're just trying to make things happen. And then the dad goes on his whole monologue about how he played cricket, but then he was discriminated against when he came to Britain. So now nobody in his family is ever allowed to play organized sports. Sports and I hate it. And then he eventually like dashed the lines to be like, and I don't want her to get her hopes up. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. There's where you're trying to be a nice dad, right? But it's not like 1902 anymore. No. And and that was like Jess was like, it's different now. And he's like, right. I don't care. It's like I don't care, but then I'll care later. Or who knows what I'll feel in a two scenes? I'll be sappy later. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yep. But don't worry, because then the coach is like Jess we're gonna go play in Germany shame you can't go and then Jess is literally like Cheech. I'm going <laughs> <laughs> she just she well, go and then I guess her sister was like you know what whatevs I'll hook her up now I've changed my mind because what the wedding's back on so I don't need my sister anymore I mean rude I don't know I don't even remember when the wedding came back on I didn't know where the older sister was because the older sister wasn't at the house like the parents thought the two sisters were on vacation somewhere Somewhere. So the older sister was, I don't know where, somewhere. And then Jess is literally in Germany getting put on the front page of newspapers <laughs> like a ding dong. Again, again, <laughs> how to get caught by Jess. Yeah, um, honestly. <laughs> we also, when she sneaks away to Germany, get the most uncomfortable scene oh, of all time. We hate Which it. is, which is by it. the way, in the background, imagine Sporty Spice singing, I turn to you <laughs> like a flower leading towards the sun. And it's our do, older do, brother do. Jimmy raving in the corner with glow sticks. <laughs> circa early 2000s at Bridget's Sweet 16. Katie doesn't forget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and basically Jules is like dance with me Joe dance with oh, me and he's it. like okay and then he's like Jules dance, just dance with me and it's the weirdest it's a weird threesome, threesome dance, dance. We hate it. <laughs> I actually think okay first of all the coach number one is an 18 year old predator number two I think he's trying to go for a threesome because honestly there was a I mean, lot of like hey let's all get in here hey, am I right ladies let's Woo. all love am I right Ew. It was so not cool. So Jess apparently drinks too much, which we don't see her drinking at all the whole night. So, okay, no. she's drunk. And she goes outside and he's like, oh, no, Jess, are you okay? And Ugh. that's when they try to kiss. Ugh. But Jules interrupts them and calls her a... chee 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 Oh, she chee chee I didn't write that down, but I believe that. She goes, yo, chee 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 She bollocks. Yeah, oh, bollocks. And honestly, this then Jules stands her ground on her being mad at Jess yeah. for a good 30 minutes of the movie. It's a long time to the point where I think she developed a little bit of depression because all we see her doing is <laughs> laying in bed sadly with the with like no sunlight. And the mom is like, she's so sad. And I'm like, what is going on here? This is a and lot. And then the mom overhears when Jess tries to apologize how Jules was talking about i loved him and the mom is getting every other word so she's Uh convinced they broke up and this is why she's been depressed because jess and jules broke up (laughs) oh my god so funny because at this point the mom is so extra she's so extra oh my god and then the mom has like a mental breakdown about it it's weird and nobody cares she's literally hysterically crying it's so well she was just so homophobic (sighs) and then eventually we also see another kind of big moment where Tony oh my god Jess's best friend basically comes out to Jess oh yeah I'm gonna be honest, I don't really love her response. Didn't love it. What did she say? Well, she kind of was like, you're Indian. Like, uh, mm, 
Mm-hmm. What's your mom going to say? Okay. And I was like, that's ma'am? rude as hell. <laughs> ma'am? 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 This is similar to your situation, and, ma'am? And then they, like, diffuse it by, like, banter. And then basically Tony's like, and by the way, your coach is hot. And she's like, ah! <laughs> I also love how they're at this point in the movie they're like oh yeah we haven't really talked about David Beckham so then they bring him <laughs> up for this part where she's like man nobody can bend it like Beckham hashtag movie title and then Tony's like I like Beckham and she's like same he's like no Jess I really <laughs> like him and I was like okay there are other ways we could have came out but nope I guess it's Beckham all day fun all fact right. about Beckham Ugh. he for, so first of all they were like hey we want to use your name for this movie and he was like what's it about and they're like women's soccer and he was he's like 100 percent. i love women's soccer all the uh. support i think money he got or something from the film he donated <gasps> we for love like that female soccer or whatever uh. so let me tell you beckham's He's a pretty stand-up guy. I give it to him. I like him, and I like Posh Spice, who is Victoria Beckham. But, you know. So there you go. We love them. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, this is, again, another, you know, screw my family. I'm going to go play soccer, even though I got in trouble when I came back from Germany. But apparently I didn't get in too much trouble, because I can still do whatever I want, and I'm tired, and I can't. I lost count. This part, I was like, listen, we could have had a club in London. We could have had the crazy threesome dance party. There. We oh, didn't God, have to no. we didn't have to get caught with the <laughs> newspaper yeah. again. Oh no. But eventually Jess decides to give up. She's like, okay, the only game that's next is literally the date of the wedding, because now that the wedding's on, they have to plan this last minute date. And Jess is like, fine, I will give up soccer. And they're like, yeah, it's your sister's wedding. Give it up. Well, before that too, she does play in one more game. But oh, it's does like, she? But it's like Aukies because like her and Jules <laughs> are still like not like friends. And But then they like have to pass to each other. But then like, and they still do great but then they don't like celebrate their goals together and I hated it. Oh, she gave like a funny frowny face in yeah. the middle of the... Okay, okay. I remember. And then Jess gets red carded and thrown out of the game. Hashtag Bash Brothers style because Woo! she like attacked a girl because the girl apparently called her a racial slur which I yeah. didn't hear but then she said after and then she yelled at the coach and she was like everything sucks and I hate everyone and then literally the next scene is like the older sister's like I'm getting married again <laughs> It's uh, like, okay, great. Okay, all right, let's but do it. But at that game, the dad shows up. So the dad yes. is starting to turn. A li- and, yes. But he's also like watching her and the coach hug. And he's like, hmm. And he's like, this is illegal, hmm. I think. <laughs> and like, I will call the not, police. That's not what happened to me in my cricket that's, experience. Oh, God, I hope not. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. And yes, okay, then we go to the wedding yeah. plot as the same day and Jess is like she basically gives up so much that this was definitely a sweet 16 reference where she has to share her room because people yeah. are visiting for the wedding definitely. and she has to take down Beckham posters so who is she gonna talk to? Did you say sweet 16? You mean 16, oh, 16 candles? candles? Sorry 16 <laughs> candles No but you're so right I was like oh girl sorry that sucks Oh, oh my god no. Sad but, like, day. Who, Literally who is she gonna talk to? Like the posters down. I know. Jules I is not talking to her. I mean, she's alone. Yeah. Tony should be mad at her because he came out and she was not supportive, <laughs> as I think yeah. she should have. Tony's a little, uh, he's a little passive about it all, mm-hmm. but somewhere within here, because it is before the wedding that Jess and Jules then are like, JK, now we're best friends again. Yeah. And you're oh. Like, what? Oh, really? Yeah. That's somewhere in there because Jess still wears Jules' shoes for the actual day of the wedding oh, and then Jules yeah. tells Joe about the um, <sighs> that she's not gonna go to the game and then Joe is like I better put on my nicest v-neck and go back to the house and creep through the window and tell her to come and then the dad's like hey what are you doing looking in the window you creeper which is how I would have reacted to because I like, would why too. are you you're staring in a window of like a family party like that's too much awkward, awkward and Joe's sir. like oh my god she should play there's a talent scout and the dad's like go teach off and then you know dad allows Jess to then be outside alone with the adult predator coach. So <laughs> there's a uh, lot of enabling happening in this movie. 
<laughs> a lot. Although, yeah. to give Jess credit, there was a lot of people in that house with a lot of flip phones, and she was spinning something on her head. I mean, it looked like a lot. <laughs> yeah, again, I was like, I'm sweaty. I'm not there, but I'm sweaty. I Somebody has sick. Somebody coughed on me. I don't know what's happening. It's not okay. Oh, my God. But seeing, like, the montage of the wedding was kind of cool, because I love so seeing fun. all that stuff. It's really, really awesome. They know how to party. They do. And it's like, I think in, I think sometimes it's like more than one day. Oh, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. It's like four know. days. Yeah, I don't know typically. if it was like that in this movie. It seemed like it was like one day. So much. So much was happening. Yeah. Um, but because she looks so sad, yeah. her dad, well, first of all, Tony's like, listen, I am your unofficial mob father. And I'm going to yeah. tell you uh, mm, to yeah. get your butt to the finals. The second half is starting. We can get there. You got 30 minutes to play. The scout is there. I'm going to change the direction of your life. Yeah. And her dad was like, well, if it'll make you smile on the video camera, I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> on the on the 100 pound video camera that some poor man has been carrying around all day. I felt so bad for that guy. I was like, oh no, sir. That was oh, all no. our home videos, Kate. I mean, big no. cameras. They were so big. How did that happen? Oh my god. Yep, so Jess goes to the game and she literally like rolls up and she's like, yo, coach, I'm here. And he's like, thank God, get in there. Chi, chi, chi. Play. <laughs> and there's like no rules. He doesn't tell no. the ref. He's like, number nine <laughs> is here. Go. Yeah, he's like, screw the other players. We're going to get her in there. And she somehow gets a penalty shot and um, she has another hallucination. She just <laughs> might be developing <laughs> schizophrenia. I'm just going to say. There's some symptoms that are um, happening, but she sees her family in their wedding attire, like yelling at her on the field. Maybe this is why she keeps forgetting her parents told her she can't play soccer like she keeps being like what oh yeah oh Uh, yeah that actually reminded me of the big green do you remember that movie wow that's a great movie that's what that reminded me i was like oh no all the hallucinations (laughs) it's happening (laughs) but then she scores and we don't really celebrate because she's like i gotta leave dress again oh my god oh my god oh my god and it's chaos also i thought wait so you're gonna go play a soccer game and then just put on all that are you showering no i, are, I is don't she think coming she coming back did. to the party sweaty and gross stinking like just dancing around everybody like a big stink bomb because that would be nasty she def did because she played that last 30 minutes of the game with like a full face of makeup and like fancy hair and i was like uh-uh mm-mm, that That's is not you are happening. not looking that good after that so no, this is not at all this is unrealistic not not at all. But this is where then after the game, Jules is like, oh, I'm going to go see my best friend at her sister's wedding, which like, that's a little too much. So I, I am kind of, I'm seeing. I was annoyed by I'm that. I'm seeing the story you're laying where maybe Jules is like, I just want to see her in her pretty she loves dress her. again. And they're, like, they're perfect. Have a moment and whatever. And the mom's like, I'll drive you. And then the mom is again convinced that she's a lesbian and she makes a f- chee chee scene. And it's awkward. So awkward. Awkward. Wait, did you get the best line ever? I wrote, yes. Yes. I wrote, get your lesbian feet out of my shoes. <laughs> Wait, but then did and you then hear the, the commentary? Okay. And then the one, mo- and then one of the grandmas on Jess's, you know, in Jess's family goes, "Lesbian? I thought she was a Pisces." <laughs> <laughs> and then they go, "She's not Lebanese." <laughs> yeah, so funny. Oh, that that was. I just hated that. I was like, "Oh my god!" It was so like Real Housewives. I was like, "Did we need this?" Oh my god. Who is the Real Housewives dude that's the host? Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen set up that scene. He's like, listen, (laughs) listen, we gotta add some drama at the end with shoes. Bravo on the street. Yeah. But we weren't invited. Let's show up. Oh no. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh my god. And then Jules is like, mom, I liked my coach who's a guy. And then the mom, instead of being mortified that her soccer coach is a bread her with children the mom then does a sigh of relief um and that's the wrong way to respond to that and Mm. yep it was dumb well and then ultimately both jules and jess get a free ride to Mm. college yo and both parents are like well i guess we should let them be happy and you're like are you for real right now because like (laughs) 12 people in the entire like world at this point because they're in England going to the US get these opportunities and they're like well I guess you know I guess we should just give in (laughs) like this is amazing 
amazing! Uh, I know. The ending was a little, like, weird like that. And, oh, and also somewhere in here, Tony, who, again, is a gay man now, uh, he thinks it's a great idea to make a public announcement at a family event that him and Jess want to get engaged, and then Jess literally 0.5 seconds later is like... <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> that ain't happening. Again, at that point, she should have said, it's me and Jules forever and ever. Jess plus Jules equals heart. <laughs> forever. Equals Santa Clara forever and ever. Heart yeah. face. We're going to sit next to each other on the plane. Bye. And, you know, again, the dad is like, you know what, guys? One time I played cricket and I was so (laughs) sad that I stopped doing that. And now my life is so sad. And you're like, okay, is the dad depressed now? Is that what he's telling us? I don't know. And then he's like, so anyway, she should go play soccer. And then the mom in like, again, immediately is like, you're right. I'm like, what is this? No. Oh, my God. Well, I kind of teared up a little bit because he was like, don't accept life the same way. I did. I want her to fight. And I want her to win. And I agree with you. The mom was way too accommodating. She's yeah. like, totally. I'm like, what? This is all we need? Yeah, she's like, I've always felt that way. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm tired. And then he became mushy. He was like, yo. Two daughters happy on the same day. What more can a dad ask for? It's like, what? <laughs> well, and then we pretty quickly see, like, uh, there's a part where Jess goes and finds Joe late at night, and we all hate it. And and it's gross. And then Jess is like, hey, you're a scrub and I'm going to go to America. <laughs> and he's like, what? We should date. I'm not your coach anymore. And I was like, ah! Like I screamed. <laughs> I was like, no, that's so inappropriate to say. But Jess turns him down. Oh. But don't worry because then, I don't know, who knows what, the next day they are all at the airport and then Joe runs in. Love actually <laughs> <laughs> who let him in the air? Who let him through TSA? I would like to know because Those what are we doing? Those cardboard cutouts. He's just Those flying in the cardboard <laughs> cutouts down like, the aisle. He literally runs in and he's like, "Oh my god, Jess." I had to say goodbye. And then she's like, you know what, Joe? Let's make out behind my family. And then they do. And it's a lot. I hated it. I hated it. It was so gross. And then they're like, oh, and we forgot to mention David Beckham. So we're going (laughs) to put him in the last scene of the movie. There's David again. There there he is. He's over there. And you're like, okay, cool. That's... All right. Well, bye. Jules tries to save it. She's like, it's a sign. I was like, that's the best we could do with this. That's the best we could do with this. <laughs> she might scene. as well have been like, it's the movie title. And then it was like, the end. And you're like, what? Oh, no. Yep. And then there's a weird, like, after credits scene, or maybe it was like before the credits, where like the dad is playing cricket with Joe. And now with they're Joe. best friends. And I hated that. I, as I well. hated it too because Joe. I hated it. Joe was like, I turned down the men's coaching job and stayed with the women's and we're gonna go pro next year so I have a big deal because I stuck with women even though I really didn't and I also didn't want to promote uh, this movie and I'm like you're the worst the worst <laughs> the worst yeah wow we did it Kate that was wow. a lot of getting caught and ignoring <laughs> it getting caught and ignoring it we bent the ball like Beckham but we didn't see him and then we saw him but not a lot and and there was a wedding in between. A lot of being gay, <laughs> but maybe you're not. But maybe, maybe you are, but let's no bend knows. it. I don't know. It's bendy. Don't know. We don't know. Yep. <laughs> a lot of bending. So, Bridge, would you rewatch this movie? Watch or don't watch? I think you should watch. However, yes. I think the ratings were a little high. Yeah, they definitely were like nostalgic ratings, I think. Yeah, I think it's a great movie. Even Roger Ebert gave it like four and a half stars, which is huge for him. Wow. That's my only caveat is watch it, but like lower the expectations a little bit and you'll enjoy it. I think I was a little mad at how great everybody said it was. Yeah. And if you are uncomfortable with coach and student relationships, as you all should be, then just like be ready because you're going to cringe. So, but then there is some other good stuff in there. Yeah. And what was very sad about this movie is the Women's Professional Soccer League, because of the 1999 Olympic team, remember Brandy Chastain scores the winning goal and rips off her shirt? Yeah. Okay, and like Mia Hamm. And Mia Hamm. That's set up for this Women's Professional League. And from like 1999 until this movie came out, like basically nobody showed up to these games once they made it like professional, so the league got shut down. Yeah. And then it had like a period where like nothing happened, nothing happened, and then the national team started again, I think 
like 2012. There's probably something else in between. But now, like, soccer's getting big again. The women are, like, kicking butt. I mean, they did a bronze performance, which wasn't the best, but... That's it, still a still, medal. Still a medal, still great. Yeah. I could see an updated Bend It Like Beckham with Kate. Two women falling in love. Oh, yeah. And the coach is not a predator. <laughs> Not a predator coach. Please. Please spare us. Not a predator coach. Oh, God. But I have your movie pick right here. (gasps) Oh, boy. Are you ready? I... No. I don't know. Am I? Are you ready? I don't know. I don't think you're ready. Uh, Okay. This is way different. And I didn't even look at your list, Kate. So this is a wild card. 1993, which is the... Best year for movies. And I think this one will actually validate that once again. It is an American coming of age comedy film. Oh my god, 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 okay. We see a lot of people that go on to be famous, some more than others. We actually reference some of these cast members in an old podcast episode. Oh. You'll get this once I say it. Okay. I was thinking of summer, and I was thinking of (gasps) the days, and I was thinking of being confused and I was thinking of the 1993 hit Dazed and Confused. Oh, that's not what I thought you were going to say. Oh, I thought you were going Sandlot. I was like, no. why are they confused? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Oh, I love Dazed and Confused. Nothing was better than seeing your face when I said confused and then you were like, Oh my god, I love Dazed We have a baby Matthew McConaughey. We have a baby Ben Affleck. Don't worry, oh. J-Lo is not here. No. I mean, people. It's just not. No, and uh, baby Matthew McConaughey also plays somewhat of a predator. So we have a drink Matthew again. <laughs> Parker Posey. Um, Parker Posey. Oh my god. Wipe that smile off your face. Chi-chi. Or something. There's a line she says in there. You'll know it. It's I great. I mean, now it's referencing the 70s, so we're yes. going to take it back. But it is summer. It is nostalgic. Yeah. And before you go back to school, kids, just live out that party before you're back to school. I don't know. That, yes, this is a great go. summer movie. Oh, my God. I love this movie so much. I can't wait. Well, Kate... <gasps> Bridge. If you really wanted to pursue soccer, which in your case could be symbols, question mark. Okay. Professionally mm. and culturally, we were against it. So you had to keep running away to bang your symbols. Oh, and God. Your best friend, Jules, and you really had this love affair and everyone kept telling you you can't do symbols and you just kept doing symbols and, you know, you just couldn't get away from it i would cover for you every step of the way so you could go pursue your dream and be oh. a professional symbol player oh thank you bridge wow oh i love that well and yeah. bridge yeah. i just want to say if you made a new friend at the park you, <laughs> um, you know liked to watch you from afar and then mustered up the courage to introduce herself and you guys started getting close and you know there were a lot of feelings coming from that person (laughs) i would uh tell you yo she's into you (laughs) so you know have that conversation first and don't go through a whole movie with the questions oh man well and listeners if you hate um the patriarchy (laughs) and bras with air that gets pumped into them (laughs) you should write us a review we love reviews we love written reviews you can review us on apple podcasts and some other podcasting apps we also have a website sisterswhoseenit.com if you scroll down on our main page there is a form you could fill out to request a movie and actually we recently had someone fill that out and i'm not gonna say your whole name sir because (gasps) that's how you get stalked but i would like to give a shout out to david david you know who you are he 
shouted out our Lord of the Rings episode, and he is a Philly guy. I love you, David. And he gave us some movie requests. So, David, I have those written down. I can't wait. And make sure you keep listening, my friend, because we will make sure to get to your requests. But thank you for that. So, listeners, if you want to be like David and have your time to shine on the podcast, please do that. We've got a list going on, and, you know, as you can probably tell if you're a weekly listener, you know, sometimes we'll do a fan request, and then sometimes we'll switch it up. So, we like to be spontaneous. So, it's, you know, it keeps you guessing. Fresh. Keeps you fresh and guessing. And, Bridge, what else can they do on our website? You can buy us coffee. Yes. It is a Ko-Fi site, and we are not saying that you could skip the movie request line by adding Ko-Fi money, but we're not not saying it, so <laughs> did I say it right? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, if you appreciate what we do, you like it, that makes us, you know, validate you do, and we'll keep on trucking, we'll keep on chatting, we'll keep on watching. I have spent a lot of money on buying these movies that for some reason are free for Katie, and I can never I, find them. Just, so it's on. it would be so helpful to just apply that money to what oh, I watch. No. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, listeners, Bend It Like Beckham is on Disney Plus. So Disney don't, Plus for, don't feed Jeff well, Bezos. For free if you have a Disney Plus account. You know, that's how okay. it goes. All right. Well, yes. Yeah, so <sighs> check all that out. And yeah, we hope to hear from you guys. So love you so much. And I hope you get out there and you bend it like Beckham. Beckham. I turn to you. Oops. Like oops. A Ray Bon out. So 2000s. I can't. Uh, I love you. Bye bye. Love you. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Sisters Who Seen It. You can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check out our website at sisterswhoseenit.com, where you can email us, request movies to be reviewed, and keep up to date with all things sisters. Also, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next week.